Morning girls, how are we doing? Back here with Chantal and Salah. This is just a quick note at the start of the video to pretty much say a lot of people have proven on different uh, videos and apps and different websites and everything like that that the Salah and Chantal channel uh, has been demonetized suddenly. I'm not entirely sure why because it's not like, he, like they would ever actually really post up anything that would get them demonetized. Like it is definitely the, the blander of the two accounts. Not sure. I see people speculating different things. Like maybe it's a main one on the AdSense and they ban her. If they're going to ban the AdSense, they would just ban the AdSense account, which would be more than likely connected to all of her accounts. Like, uh, you, generally when you set up, you can just link all of your accounts to the single AdSense account because you're not meant to have more than one AdSense account. So, more than likely, they went in and um, just demonetized this channel specifically for some reason. I'm not sure. I, honest to God... Maybe it just stopped meeting the requirements. Like, I, I, I'm i not sure what the exact requirements are for it to maintain, because I've never had to really worry about that. But, like, when you first get monetized, you have to get, like, 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers. Obviously, yes, more than 1,000 subscribers. However, I don't know. Maybe maybe they reviewed every once in a while and go, like, well, you're not getting 4,000 watch hours because, like, she just wouldn't be. With, with the number she's putting in, like, for the, for the videos and how, like, small like are, are, her numbers are like her numbers are genuinely like awful they're worse than my main account uh, I, I, I don't think she would be getting 4,000 watch hours I actually think it may be possible that she's just dropped under the requirements for the account now and maybe they've just cut it out who knows I could be entirely wrong but that's just my wee speculation it's not like it really affects her very much because like if you look at her account and social blade there like the major the vast majority of the views she's got recently has been like today and yesterday pretty much because people are going to check to see if it's demonetized so so that's where she's getting the 747 from but apart from that it's not like very good numbers at all like you know i think even like my my, my this account you're currently watching on gets more of a daily tick than that does you know so that's pretty bad already but we're gonna go into it i know i'm pretty far behind with a lot of her videos but the thing is a lot of our videos have been pretty boring recently, and the main guy I talk about, uh, Boogie298, he has had massive meltdowns recently, and I've been kind of focusing my attention on him doing a long-form video, which I'll probably drop here as well. I'll drop, put a community tab note saying it's here if you guys want to watch it. Um, maybe we'll do a live stream as well to catch up with Foodie, but I wanted to cover her going to Thailand, so we'll cut to that. Fucking... It's just, oh, oh I, <laughs> I opened the video, and we got the sleep paralysis demon fucking here with the filters, like, cranked to max, so her eye shapes don't even fucking match, and she's starting to get her pointy chin again from all the filters, and, like, the, the green screen doesn't know what to deal with <laughs> with her kind of wave like that. Fantastic. I, I don't, why are we doing this, like weird green screen thing it's like it's so it's so pointless it doesn't add anything to the experience it wouldn't make a difference if she's just sitting on a couch uh but this is thailand travel tips and how much we spent for 42 days uh i'm kind of curious about this because i i like holidays um uh, i've been on long holidays before uh so i'm, I'm kind of curious to see what we go into especially when like look this is the woman who was there for 42 days and a rough estimate of it is she spent at least 30 of those not leaving the hotel whatsoever. So I'm really curious to how she tries to spin to make it seem like Thailand was like an adventure of a lifetime when it was really, she went to a couple places, mostly on the same day, and then just cut it up and edited it. Hi guys, assalamualaikum. Hi. Welcome back to another video. You're so ridiculous, today I'm going to be doing a video that I should have done a long time ago. We've been home. <laughs> I should have done a long time ago, you know, when people like remembered or c cared about the Thailand arc because like, the second she got back to Kuwait, everyone realized the Thailand arc was literally exactly the same as the Kuwait arc, and no one cared. Like, does, no, does anyone even mention Thailand anymore? <laughs> it's so weird that she's only been back for like a month or so, and no one cares. No one remembers she even went to Thailand. People are still talking about Cuba instead, and that was like two years ago. It's so fucking weird. From Thailand since October 10th, so it's been a little while, a few weeks. Yep. And I Month, want to conclude okay. the trip with a kind of give you an idea um, and some tips. Give you an idea of what we spent budget wise. Wow. And she she only it's, I in my opinion because this is like twenty minutes long. This is like pretty pretty long for one of her videos. In my opinion, she is only doing this because she she knows people only care about what she spent. And firstly, no one buys it. No 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 matter what she says here. I'm probably going to say that's a fake number. No matter what she says, because she lies constantly. Like, why would I believe her? Um, but I think that's the main reason. It's like how much we spent for, four, for 42 days. I think that is going to be it. Um, 
going through the tips, I always find it weird because, like, generally, because, I, like I said, I watch a lot of these pe people who do travel vlogs and they talk about, you know, this is a tip I would do. You should, shouldn't go here for the ticket. You should actually go here for the ticket this time of day because then you might get a disc. Shit like that. I watch, I, I watch that kind of stuff. A lot of it usually, like, includes footage of them showing you what to do and how to do it whilst they're in Thailand. I wonder if she's going to show any clips or if it's just going to be her sitting here in front of this fucking green screen the whole time. Give you some tips if you're planning on you sure. know, traveling to Thailand as a first time traveler. And these are things that I kind of wish that I knew as well, that somebody would have given me tips on. Um, well, you could have just YouTube searched it like everyone. Also, Sala has been there before. Like people have said that I right? That's why people repeatedly joke that he was going back to the clubs that he frequented in Thailand because he has been in Thailand before. <laughs> that was already something that was claimed. Uh, like, I, I, I don't know. I just... What position in life would you have to be to take tips from foodie to do, like, anything? Um, I did look up some tips before we went, but some things, sure. you know, you just have to kind of experience to get an idea of what it's like. So we went to Thailand from August 29th until October 10th, I believe it is. And these are just going to be kind of rough estimates. We actually think we ended up spending a little more on little, like, nuances that we're just not um, thinking of right now. On uh, nuances? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, feel free to also ask your questions in the comments. I'll try no. to answer as many as I can. So I had to write down some notes because I will not remember all this. Wow. Um, uh, so professional. I'm glad she opens a book and starts reading. Like, what should I fucking talk about first? <laughs> this is why most people do, like, a voiceover with footage that shows them doing it or whatever in Thailand. Because it's not them going, oh, when we, when we sack. Um, uh, as they read through their fucking notes trying to find where to start. Why? Um, so, uh, so all right, I'll start with the tips and then I'll get into what we spent in the budget. This is the first tip she's ever started with. <laughs> all right. So, um, number one thing that stands out the most, I guess, is... I wonder if I should, like, try and guess what these tips are going to be. Like, because she's already covered some of them, which is, like, one, make never accept the initial price, negotiate with people and barter, like, not barter with people. But, like, just try and, like... I don't know, talk people down on prices because, the, the, you know, that, that it is something you should do. But you should do that in a lot of countries, but it depends on the culture. Like, if generally if you're in, like, I don't know, I don't want to be mean when I say a poorer country and you're doing all the, like, actual, like, street food market kind of stuff, like, you can try and, like, talk down, like, prices and everything like that. But, like, you also have to try and remember that if you go into, like, an actual shop, then <laughs> then it's likely the price on the shelf is the price on the shelf. You know, it wouldn't work in, like, Japan. If you go to Japan and start trying to barter with people, they'll be like, what the fuck? Well, bro, what are you doing? Um, I don't know, probably cash-based. Probably she talks about the heat or something like that. Talks about there's a lot of walking. I don't know. You know, we went during monsoon season. We didn't really sure, yeah. care too much about the weather. Luckily for us, we yeah. love the rain. We love sun. Even though you were sitting in doing live streams, saying the reason you weren't heading out was because it was raining so much. We love guys. We love the rain so much. You went through monsoon season because that was when it was cheap. Under storms, it was nice watching the lightning shows every day, every afternoon. Uh -huh, sure. After we would get back from an attraction and watch e the every afternoon after we got back from an attraction. Look at that fucking face. <laughs> this is the demon trying to sneak out of her. The demon of lies. The demon of lies. <laughs> oh, I, I, every day we'd come back from our attractions and we'd watch the lightning together. You literally would come back from uh, your bedroom and sit with that fucking table and eat food and bitch on fucking live stream about shit. You didn't leave the apartment for like 30 days. <laughs> the lightning and thunder, yeah, sure. watch the lightning and listen to the thunder from our balcony. Uh, so, but if you're somebody who's looking to stay dry and wants more of the sunshine, I would go in the more- Oh my God, is she actually telling people if you don't want, like, you want to get wet, don't go during monsoon season. Is this like actually a tip? Like, they feel like they need to tell them. Like, oh, you know, if, if you don't like rain, probably don't go when it rains a lot. It's, oh, really? That makes sense. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm going to come out here with a hot tip for you. Uh, if you don't like uh, the cold, don't go to, like, Milwaukee during winter. There you go. If you like, if you like, if you don't like the cold, go during summer. Uh, you bet you didn't think of that, guys. Spring, like summer months, I guess. I don't know if they have spring, but God, she's stupid um, as monsoon shit. season, we went right in the middle of that, you know, like September, October. Yep, so during the cheap um, period. But they are apparently the more affordable season. So if you're looking to save. Apparently they're more. I, do, I wouldn't know. It's not like I looked specifically for that reason or anything. Save money on your trip. You might want to go on the off season, the rain season. Yes. If you can put if you can put up with the rain, the umbrellas are very affordable there. So for us, it wasn't a big deal, actually. <laughs> for me, for surprisingly, as someone who didn't actually leave my hotel room for 30 days, 
weirdly, it wasn't that big a deal that it was raining outside. I'm, I'm, I surprised even myself at that. <laughs> what the, f what? It, it did honestly get a bit tiring after a while because sure, it literally, yeah. when I'm not exaggerating, it rained hard <laughs> and thunder. It, there was a thunderstorm every afternoon. Okay, do you know what? I'm now at the point, foodie. We get it. You've been on this point for a minute and a half. We get it. Noon, and uh, I'll insert some of the clips I have from that here. Sure. Oh God, look, it's raining hard, guy. Oh, oh, oh look at that hard rain. It... <laughs> oh no, look, it's raining hard. It's raining, that's it. I love she seriously cut back to the same fucking clip again. She showed this clip first, cut to a different clip, cut back to this clip again, because she, she clearly just didn't care. Like, she just didn't fucking care. She was too busy sitting there on the fucking ground on live stream instead. Oh my god. Yep, it's still rain. Oh my god. She's actually shown us like 40 seconds of this so far. We don't know. Like I said, we get it. Like I, I realize you're broke. I realize you're broke. I realize you, you, you absolutely like shredded your bank account trying to buy Salah a new car or something like that to make up for you having that freak out the other day. I understand that entirely. But please do not try and stretch your video out by including like a minute straight of like fucking rain footage. It's like, like especially when you're talking about the thunder and the lightning. Show me that. Show me the lightning that you were sitting on your balcony watching. We get stuck in some floods. Oh my god! Uh, going to Kawasan Road. I did do. Yes, did do we know. Saw, but... I got stuck in a flood, bro. It's a little bit of fucking water. Calm down. Right. So if you're you're wanting to avoid that kind of thing, you know, just um, messy weather. Oh my uh, some god! Some attractions are not as fun in the rain. Um, so it's some attractions aren't fun if you don't, you know, go to them and don't leave your uh, hotel room. That's probably the more truthful statement. Four minutes into this, guys. We're a fifth of the way through this fucking video. We've had one tip, and it's, if you don't like rain, don't go during monsoon season. <laughs> like, that's it. That's it. That's all we have. It's a, like, it isn't even as stupid. I was like, I, I was just like, I'll, I'll, I'll estimate some, like, tip she might give here. I don't know if it's been, like, three minutes straight off. Oh, it's raining lots, and if you don't like the rain, you might not like the rain. <laughs> It just depends. I know, can't believe it. I actually can't believe this. So if you don't want the rain, do not go in monsoon season. No, well, really, that's, is that it? Thanks. Um, maybe even November. I love she put on screen that it was July to uh, October. And she was like, well, if you don't want, don't go during like September, October, or, or like July and August. Another thing I discovered is um, a bit of fat shaming. If you're, you know, yes. a bit bigger. Yeah. If you're a big woman, uh -huh. big person, big woman, big man. If you're morally obese, if you are literally considered in the death thought category, if you are 450 pounds, yes. Oh, if you're a wee bit bigger, if you're a wee bit bigger, oh, just so you know, if you're a wee bit... I personally experienced this because some woman said, you eat too much. That's it. For anyone who doesn't remember that, that's all she said. She asked if she was pregnant, uh, Foodie said no, and she goes it's like, oh, you, you eat too much. That's it. That's not even fat shaming. <laughs> it's not even fat shaming. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, you might get a bit fat shamed. It's I've, it's only happened to me once, and I don't. Yeah, and it didn't even happen. Like fat shaming. Guys, one thing you need to know is you'll get fat shamed. It happened to me like once, and actually, it wasn't even fat shaming. That was a good story there, Chantel. Thanks for including me. <laughs> you know, I think the person was what just the fuck? being honest, or there might have been like yes. a language barrier. I didn't feel any malice from their comments. Yeah, just just like you know, when people tell you that you are morally obese and unattractive, they are being honest. Like, this is, I think this is the biggest problem a lot of people, like, when they tie, like, fat shaming with any form of criticism of someone being, like, 450 pounds, like Chantel. It's like, that, this is the problem. When she's like, oh, well, everything's fat shaming to me. Oh, my God, you guys are fat shaming me. And uh, there was this woman who goes, well, I think she was just being honest. It's like, yes, well, I'm also just being honest. Um, but the person, I mean, I did a video on that as well. Um, uh, yeah, I, on our couple's channel. Also. I love her tips are literally just, like, the few things in Thailand that she actually experienced. I mean, she couldn't give tips on, like, the best way to sit in your hotel room for 30 days. I guess she couldn't do that tip. Some of them on my channel here. Um, but they did make, you know, this woman did make a comment on the street. 100% uh, she literally just showed her picture because she's trying to body shame that woman again. She did She did that before. I made that point like, exactly the time that she never, like, included stuff, like, people on her thumbnails. 
except during like live streams where she was trying to shit on like FFG or just Brazen or any of those other people. But she tries to shit on them, she will include a thought a picture of them on the thumbnail to like mock like look how they they, they look. Which I have to admit, I like it, I, I'm not like crying about it. I'm not offended by it because I obviously include pictures of her looking stupid on my thumbnails. I would argue the point that this because she just always looks fucking stupid. <laughs> like so that's kind of easy to do. But she would go like looking for people's pictures. She included a picture of that woman because she is trying to say this thing. This ugly thing mocked me. That is entirely where she was going with this. Uh, thinking I was pregnant and saying I eat too much and stuff like that. Yeah. So if, you're, if you get it. embarrassed by that kind of thing, luckily for me, I don't get easily embarrassed. Yeah, okay. If you get easily embarrassed... You <laughs> she immediately goes to her comfort by, uh, uh, by it and starts like adjusting it because she does get a bias uh, uh, bars. She cut out her getting into the tuk-tuk. She cut out her get, getting in and out of the boat because she was humiliated. She was absolutely embarrassed. She, do she does. Like, she cries constantly and says she's going to get everyone's channel taken down for fat shaming her. But if you, if you don't mind and it doesn't bother you and you don't get embarrassed, then what, then what are you talking about? Why did you go out to the night market, to the, not the night market, to the market to get dinner at like 10, half 10 p.m.? Like, why would you be doing that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. I don't like people picking out your appearance or, you know, kind of... Which apparently doesn't uh, bother her. Pointing you out in public and stuff like that. I remember the way you're at that market and you uh, deleted the live stream and lied and claimed it was because of copyright issues because you, you had to take it down and re-edit it and you re-edit it and said that you included the bit. It's like, I wasn't ashamed at all. I even left in the woman taking a picture of me and she didn't because I think she just assumed no one would check. But like I checked, I watched the two of them back to back and she cut out the bits of people like mocking her or laughing at her or, or watching her in the background. She cut out all of them. So I don't get where this is. She even cut out bits with her like addressing it and talking about it. But guys, she doesn't. She doesn't mind. She doesn't mind. It doesn't upset her whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe be wary of that. That might happen to you. My advice is just not not to take it personal, and uh, you'll you'll be fine. Maybe you should um, listen to that advice. I've heard rumors of this before going to Thailand, but I wasn't sure. Now we stayed at three different hotels. If she's gonna say the fruit ban, as in like the durian, like it's it's gonna be like okay. And two of them did not allow anyone to bring in durian fruit or mangosteen uh -huh. inside of the hotel room because of, well, the durian because of the strong odor. I can't blame them. There was one hotel we were allowed to bring durian and it lingered in the room the whole time. Sure did. My bad. Yeah. Uh, uh, my bad, guys. I'm quirky and relatable. Like I said, she, we're not seeing anything. This is when she should be showing like footage of her doing her, of her out at the night market buying it. But this is like the lowest of low effort that we've got and I'm, I'm i'm gonna be really fucking honest with you the travel tip of some like some hotels won't let you bring durian in here's my travel my hot travel tip for you guys some hotels they don't let you bring durian in just just in case like it's like so like i'm, I'm how many people do you think that really affects if they aren't a lie i'm pretty sure people going into their hotel will see the sign they don't need this as a travel tip from you Mangosteen, apparently it stains and it's hard to get the stains out and the hotel sheets are bleach white so they do not want any um mango i love she makes it sound like this is unique this shows how little traveling she's ever done and the, the hotel sheets are actually clean unlike in my house so that's why i think that's why they don't want you to stain it because they're actually clean <laughs> this is this is such like a a, a uh, like a, a window into her worldview that she is blown away that she went to a hotel and sheets were fucking clean. <laughs> Everyone needs a joke about her going to like these shitty little motels with Nada for a quick ride because they couldn't do it when Nada was living with Didi, so they would go to some like shitty motel to have sex. And it's just like, is that true? Because she's like stunned by them having clean sheets here. Seen or durian, and they actually charge a fine. Of yeah. it depends. Some of them three thousand baht. Yep. So yeah. It's almost like if you smoke. Sorry, guys, phone call. Yeah, it's almost like if you smoke, you get charged because the smoking can stain the sheets, can stain wallpaper, can stain anything pretty much, and also it smells. <laughs> it's exactly the same. She's like talking like this is insane, and it's like, no, it's, it's not even that uncommon. It's like, it, like that you're banned from doing or having certain things in your hotel room. It's like hotels all over the world have different rules for different things like this. I just find dur durian. Is like the one thing she has because it's the one thing she did in Thailand. She's make, trying to make an entire segment on this, and it's like, oh guys, here's a hot travel tip for you. you sometimes you can't bring a durian into your bedroom. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, might not want to do that. Another wow. thing is the transportation. 
The transportation is very uh, tricky and finicky sometimes. I bet they, it is. They um, have apps. We used apps such as um, Bolt, uh, Grab. There's Tuk Tuk's. Yep. Those are like... Wow, we've, we've got a, a, a awkward still shot that's not even in focus. Thank you, Chantal. Wouldn't it like, work for you to show any of the... 42 times you showed us you slowly driving around in a tuk tuk and we're like oh the whole time like could you not just, like, just include a clip of it as opposed to just a pic this awkward picture privately owned by the tuk tuk owner um grab and bolt are like an uber kind yes of thing, they are or lift even i'm aware um, of this but even though they're a company like that you put in where you want to go and then they scan for drivers and the thing is is that the drivers have a right to refuse the ride i'm not sure that's the same for like uber and everything like that like it's I don't know, it's 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 kind of weird for me that she is, like, acting, like, actually mind-blown by this bit of information. I was like, no, bro, that's that's obvious. Like, I'm, I'm assuming she's upset that she probably, ha like, put in, you know, oh, I, I want a, a driver. And the driver showed up, and they saw her. And we're like, nope. And they just drove on. Because why would you want something like that? You look at her, and you probably go, like, oh, my God, she smells. You saw her getting in and out of a tuk-tuk. You're probably like, God... I'm insured on this fucking car. If she fucking wipes herself out trying to squeeze herself in and out of my car, the, the fuel costs will go up because she weighs so much. You know, shit like that. I wouldn't surprise me. I, I've seen people before in like my comment section all saying, if I was like an Uber driver, I wouldn't pick up Amberlynn. And like, you know, Foodie and Amberlynn, they're pretty fucking similar. Sure, it's like that in Uber. I'm pretty sure they can, it is. but it is, yes. They're very like, they'll I love she thinks that people can't refuse. I'm not sure if it's the same in Uber. Yeah, it's obviously the same in Uber. People don't have to serve you. <laughs> it's it's the same in shops. Shops can refuse service to you. <laughs> like, just, why is she surprised? It's like, oh, it's so weird. People can like refuse your service. It's like, yeah, it's, it's almost like that's what a, like a, a free and open market does. Refuse for just anything for like no reason. You know, if they just don't want to. If yeah, it's being four hundred fifty pounds. Um, yeah, obviously they just won't do it. Like sometimes, if our ride was only going to cost eighty five bots, we had to wait like forever to try to find a driver. Um, but if it was like 200 bots, they would pick up just like that. So because- Yeah, like imagine. Like, I'm sorry, you guys have all had it before. Like, foodies, foodies should know this. Foodies are one member, she's telling those stories. Yeah, when I would go to the club and I'd be out of the club and then I'd go to 7-Eleven and then we'd do the after party and then I'd do 7-Eleven again because I'm still a wee bit hungry, you know? But it's like, okay, so you must know what it's like to catch a taxi late at night when you've been drinking. And you go up to the taxi guy and you go, Hey, hey, mate, you know, can I, can I get a, can I get a lift? And he's just like, where are you going? And then you tell him and you see that the cog turn in his head and he's like, hmm, how long am I going to be off the road for this? Okay, well, if it's only a short ride, then yeah, actually I might be able to because I can be back. I can pick someone up in the next five minutes. So I can do a short ride and then obviously you have to do the booking fee, which is like the initial part of it. So he's like, well, I could do the, this one quickly. Oh, wait, you're going here? Oh, well, if I go out there, I'm not going to get another job and I'm going to have to drive all the way back. And it could be like a 20 minute drive. So that's 20 minutes where I'm not working. You know, you see the cog going in their fucking head as they try and work out if you are like worth taking, you know? That's exactly what she's experiencing. And she's acting like this is like, a culturally new thing for Thailand. And this is her travel tip. It's like, bro, this happens everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> because they're based on commission, the higher the price of the ride, oh the more likely God. they're going to be like, I want that one, you know? What? When people are likely to get paid more for something, they're more than likely to do it? What? She is so stupid. Also depends on traffic. The traffic yeah, imagine. in Thailand are bad, sure. especially in the you know the business hours, um, in the early evening. Oh my God! It's like it's like foodies experiencing like a major city for the first time in her life. <laughs> it has traffic jams. It's like yeah, I'm I'm sure it does, bro. Especially during rush hour. <laughs> what is this? Really oh my God! She's so stupid. Um, she has no life experience. Sometimes no life experience at all. an hour to get to a place that's like 20 minutes away or more. Hey, do you know what usually people do then? They walk. Uh, I'm sorry to spoil it for you. I know, I know Foodie, you were telling us about how you like walk constantly and you're like a superstar walker now. Uh, most people would walk that instead of sitting in traffic for an hour. Most people would say, do you know what, fuck it. I will just walk it. You know? Because why not? I might as well. Most people would take like... I don't know, a, a, a bus or something like that. Who knows, maybe it's, it's a bus lane, but obviously she wouldn't get on public transport like that because it would get, cause her to have a fucking meltdown because she'd be being judged and she wouldn't be able to fit in the fucking seat. Like, yeah, sometimes it's busy. I have, I have done the Japanese rush hour 
train. <laughs> like the whole train thing. We are crammed in like fucking sardines. I have done that. And I am fucking twice as wide as a fucking Japanese person. Like, I've done that. It, it, is it fun? No. But it's something you have to in encounter or you have to plan your trip around that. She makes it sound like this is like a common occurrence and it was so hard. They rarely left the fucking hotel. I'm sorry. I bet you didn't actually have to deal with it that much. Like, I, like, I generally tried to like plan my holidays where it was like, well, okay, we're going to do this. Maybe let's not go here at this time. Because if you go out here at this time, we're going to have to be taking these trains. We have to go here. And we have to transfer in this station. This station is super busy. And then we're going to be crammed into cars. It's going to be really difficult. We might even have to wait for another train. You know, that's, that's how you think when you're on, on holiday. Like, but she is, like, acting like this is all, like, brand new information to her. And it's like, bro, this is, like, normal. She's like, this is a woman who's single. Like, I wish people had told me this before I go. But sometimes you just have to experience it for yourself. And it's like, uh, sometimes uh, taxi guys don't pick you up. And sometimes uh, it's busy and there's traffic. <laughs> that's it. That's, that's all we've got. And sometimes it rains. Sometimes it rains. The good thing about the transportation apps is that they oh charge God. a flat rate no matter how long it takes you to get there instead of a meter. Well, that's but the taxis enough. are allowed to refuse trips as well. So yeah, just... and that's probably one of the reasons why they, they refuse trips. Because if, like like you said, if, if it's a flat rate, which, you know, I guess is fairer to you, uh, as the customer but imagine the, the taxi guy who wanted to make a 20 minute trip and then he gets stuck maybe this road works or something and he gets stuck for an hour that dude's lost 40 minutes of, of, of wages f driving you 20 minutes you know but it takes him an hour he, like like, I, 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 I get it I get it I get it why they would turn you down so willingly if that is how they work in their system it, it makes a lot of sense to me if the guy's like you know what where I'm taking you uh, that's not gonna it says it's gonna be a five minute trip that's not gonna be a five minute trip and it's only for 80 baht Nah, I'm good. Thanks for it. So I, I actually, I get it. That makes sense. That's kind of how you should be approaching this information and not making it sound like it's such a hard burden for you. You know, this should be ways to like try and like, it's a tip. Remember guys, it's a, this is a tip segment. She should be saying, so instead guys, actually what you should do is this and you should do this. I should, you should go to these people because like, the tuk tuk people, they're better than taxis because they'll, they're able to nip between vehicles. So usually you don't get stuck as much in tuk tuk. Uh, but if you do this, if you go here, if you talk to, you know, this company, I find this company really, that's what a tip is. You're giving tips. Her tip is sometimes the roads are busy. It's like, is that a tip? Is, is that a like, only place I don't think that's a tip is North Korea because they've got like 20 cars in the entire fucking country. That's a joke. <laughs> Before anyone fucking comes for me. All of my North Korean fans like revolt against me. But this is, there's no tips. She's just saying, oh, this, sometimes it's a bit really. It's like, okay, <laughs> is, that, is that it? Have you got anything else to say? Or you can say, oh, but it, you know, even in the rain, you should actually go to this place because it actually looks fantastic in the rain. Oh, we should go to this because the tourist numbers were lower or anything like that. It's just like, oh, sometimes it's really rainy and I like watching it from my window. <laughs> Be aware that your ride might get cancelled. You just have to have a lot of patience and you'll be fine. Sure. All right. Now I'm going to get to the budget, the money side of things. Yay. All right. I'm going to tell you how much is that? Spent. Is that genuinely eight and a half minutes of her tips? And we've got like fucking 11 minutes left. Uh, and it's a budget night. Jesus fucking Christ. Eight and a half minutes. And the tips were that don't go to your monsoon season if you don't like the rain. Fucking shocker. You, you can't bring durian and certain things into your hotel room, which is like fucking no shit shocker again. Like sometimes the roads are busy. Shocker. And you might get fat shamed, even though I didn't. Those are like the tips. Eight and a half minutes for those quote unquote fucking tips. Holy wow. F foodie, you've outdone yourself. You, you really should be a professional travel blogger. On each do you think youtube maybe like saw this video and was like this is so shit i am going to demonetize her travel vlog series because she does not deserve to earn money on these fucking travel vlogs because this is the shittest information i've ever seen <laughs> category roughly uh, oh my god things like that so the currency in thailand is the thai bot yeah we know you idea, said um one canadian dollar is 25 25 baht yep usd it's 35 baht. I have no, I, like, I, 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 43 for me then? Okay. So what she's saying is that these evil taxi people who, who don't want to earn just two pounds might turn down, you might, might turn down your trip. Oh, those evil taxi people leaving a poor dainty girl like me in distress for like less than two pounds. <laughs> like, geez, I'd feel bad. I'd feel bad giving them two pounds. British gold pound, 43 baht in Australian dollar. 20. Did she just bet you say British gold pound? Did she just say British gold pound? 
Fuck, I wish our pines were made of fucking gold. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the British golden pines. Why is she comparing it to Kuwaiti dinar? That's weird, because that, that's her currency. That's her country, guys. Why isn't she showing Kuwaiti dinar? Thank you, bud. For KD, for Kuwaiti Dinar, oh, there you go. Okay. it's 115 bots. You can use your credit She's like jumped into three people there. Holy shit. The filters like thought she was like genuinely thought she was three people and tried to split her up there. Holy fuck. Like, like okay. So like she is upset uh, by potentially spending like 50 cents in, in, in Kuwaiti denomination, like 50, 60 cents or something like that. Uh, and she's like, oh, these taxi drivers, oh, they wouldn't even take my trip for that. It's like, bro. Yeah. It's like 50, 60 cents. Like. At that point, when you'd be like, oh, come on, you know, this is a time where you should be like going up to taxi people at the side of the street and like flashing like a, a 10 Q80 dinar, no doubt them and be like, bro, you're going to you're going to get me there soon. That's the kind of thing you should be doing. <laughs> you, know, you know, money, money talks in, in a lot of countries. So it certainly would in Thailand. That's when you should, should go up and say, like, well, do you know what? This trip is going to cost two quid. I feel like a dickhead for that. You'll make I want to get here. I don't want to be waiting around for a taxi. Here's a tenner. Something like that. Make it a little bit more fair for them. And it's not like it's really brick in the bank for you. Heard. That's an actual tip, by the way. That's an actual tip. Unlike Foodie, he hasn't been able to say a single fucking tip this, this far. Apart from, what was her tip for the fat shaming thing? It, weirdly, the tip wasn't, don't be fat. Which is probably the best way to get around that. Weirdly, her tip was like, uh, I don't know. Don't go if you might get offended. But they primarily like cash there so yes like obviously while you're purchasing things in thailand obviously you can even pay for your hotels back. do you know what i'm gonna tell you everywhere apart that isn't like a major corporation likes you to use cash like everywhere like l everywhere in northern ireland i don't know how many fucking like chinese chinese that there are indians there are that just do not accept credit card <laughs> they are just like cash payment only like it's that's just super common it is super super common especially in asian countries like i'm sorry like yeah even japan which is like considered one of the most like advanced asian countries like one of the most first world asian countries even japan is like a cash-based economy it's changed a bit after covid but i think it used to be like 87 percent still back when i went to it like it's like 87 percent cash-based still that way it seems that the cash currency is actually preferred over other methods so make sure you exchange enough money. And I think the best place to do that, from what I understand, oh God, no. is, I've been told, is at the airport. What? The best place to exchange is at the airport? What? Are you, what? They have you for a barrel at the airport. It's not the best place to exchange. Well, the best place, I've, I've been told, because... She, she is so unworldly wise. It's like, why are you giving advice? Why are you giving tips when you don't know? You're like, well, someone told me this. No, do you know what you should do? You should be researching before you go and you should be like tracking the currency through several different people online. And look for companies that are online that will ship the money to you. You can get like, um, just like the money directly posted to you. That's what I did when I went to Japan. I used an online site. I went through and I compared different places and I saw what they were each offering. And then I went forward and I decided, you know, it's like even right now, I have bought yen already to go back to Japan because currently the yen is really low. It's like, I think it's like 180-ish yen to the pound or something like that, right? So I have already started pre-buying yen in advance because it's in a good place for me right now. So I've already started pre-buying. That's the kind of information you should get. Not to, I don't I don't know, wait till you go to the airport, I guess, and then try and get all your money exchanged. That is her actual advice here. <laughs> wait until you have no other option. <laughs> God. There's what a, a fucking whole idiot. Bunch of booths, so make sure oh, you look so for stupid. You, you compare prices. It can be competitive to oh. get the most bang for your buck. Now yeah. we actually found a really good exchange rate at a place here in Kuwait before we sure left. Sure you did. So we were able to exchange all of the money that way. Yeah, sure. Some things we did pay by credit card, but it's mostly cash. Yep. So we have different categories. You can also withdraw cash from credit cards at an ATM. Uh, don't use credit cards at an ATM. I don't know, maybe, maybe America or Canada or whatever the fuck is different, but for us, credit cards, it's treated as like, like a quasi cash transaction or direct cash transaction where you are withdrawing, it will start charging the interest immediately on it. Uh, oftentimes you get hit with exchange fees and all. Uh, so generally, if you can avoid it, I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you have like a 0% card. 
like that allows you to be able to use your card overseas without any any international handling fees, any currency exchange fees, or anything along those lines. Or use also those other cards like Revolut and all, or Monzo, where you can like specifically deposit your funds into like Thai baht or something like that. So when you're making a transaction, it is con being considered not an international transaction and not a, a currency conversion rate because then if you do a currency conversion, oftentimes the bank will then use their own exchange rate, which is generally a bad exchange rate, to transfer the funds. So you shouldn't use credit cards. And if you do ha have a ha have an option, a Monzo card or Revolut card is probably a good option for you. I'm not a financial advisor or anything like that, obviously, guys. I'm just saying from like my general experience of traveling, I would never use a credit card at an ATM. Debit card? Yeah, sure. Like, you might use a debit card, but like, even that, like I said, you have to deal with all those exchange fees and all I just said. So, a Monzo or a Revolut would generally be considered better. ...for the budget, okay? Um... Wow, wow, I'm glad you kept that in where she just like, oh, I don't know what they even fucking say anymore. You might go over because if, especially if it's your first time in a country, you know, you just, you, it just happens, you know? Now, yeah, I had to buy poutine 17 times a day. Sometimes you just go over your budget. This, remember, this is the woman who didn't leave her hotel for like 30 days. <laughs> and she is talking about, oh, sometimes you get really excited on a holiday and you might over... No, bro, it's because you're sitting in your hotel room ordering food constantly, sending Salah out to buy food constantly. The vast majority of her, her money was definitely spent on fucking food. It wasn't spent on attractions. <laughs> like, like her fucking, like, it cost me like 10, 10 Canadian dollars to go see tigers. Like, that shit, that wasn't where all the fucking money went. You know, now, um... We're going to start with the airfare. So we flew with Qatar Airways yep. and the airfare was 300 KD per person. Now I'm going to talk in KD and bots and I'll put the conversions for other currencies here. That's pretty exp I remember looking at it. I think this is an exaggeration because I remember looking at it and it was like, it wasn't this much. Because I remember she was gloating and it was during the part where she was like flexing on people saying like, and you guys are acting like I'm broke, but then the next second you said I can afford another seat. <laughs> what are you talking about? This doesn't make any sense. And I looked at it and it, it, it wasn't like 1,588, you know, for the, just the two of them. I, I, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like, I, I, I'm sorry. I just, I don't believe this figure. More Okay. So to give you an idea. So yeah, so we spent total 600 KD for the flights alone. That was return trip. The hotels, again, we stayed in Bangkok for, was it a couple of weeks? And then we went to Pattaya and then we went back to Bangkok. So. What? Pattaya. Oh, and then for we Foxy, where is it? Correction, one week Bangkok, then one week Pattaya. Okay, so I'm assuming she meant like one week Bangkok, one week in Pattaya, and then a couple weeks back in Bangkok. Which isn't like that big an issue that she had to do the correction for. Like she spent a week in Bataya. They only did like four things. How do you spend a week somewhere and do like four things? Especially when two of them were done on the same day. For was it a couple of weeks? And then we went to Pattaya. And then we went back to Bangkok. I think it's hilarious that she genuinely doesn't remember like what she did when she did it on her holiday because like I said, she pretty much spent like once she got back from Pattaya, she just basically did not leave the the ho hotel. She just sat in the hotel room for like the entire rest of the holiday. So we spent a total of um, three, it was 248 KD for the hotel's total, which is 30,000 baht. For 42 days? Um, reasonable, I guess. Reasonable enough price, 687 for 42 days in Thailand. Um, yeah, maybe about that. Maybe about that's what I'd be expecting to pay. I could, I could do it cheaper than that. Um, because I, I always remember, uh, when I was intending, there was one time I was intending to go to Japan for like a special event and I was going to be just me. Because I actually like traveling by myself. And it's going to be just me. And I priced it for being three weeks in Japan for about, I think it was about 600 pounds in total for the flights in the hotel. Because I was going to stay at like capsule hotels, uh, which are like super cheap, you know. Because I'm more than able to and more than happy to stay in a capsule hotel. It doesn't bother me. And it's, it, it's really cheap. It's a lot better for me to do it like that. Um, so like, yeah, I guess, you know, if we're going, going to go off, like what is that about... 15-ish pounds a, a, a night. Yeah, Thailand's not a very affluent area. I think the first place they stayed was like, was it in the heart of the red light district or something like that. So it makes sense. Yeah, I think I think this is a, that's a, that's, that's a totally reasonable number. Yes. But you could probably do it cheaper though. Within like set, like few, give or take, but 30,000. Um, transportation. 
So transportation on a daily basis, like if we're going to, it should cost nothing. Now you can you can spend a lot. You know, transportation on a daily basis. You know, going to attractions, bro. I've seen you in Thailand. Can we stop like selling this? Like she did a lot in Thailand. Can we stop, bro? You for basically thirty days straight, you stayed in your hotel room. That's okay. You can take um, the boat we took to get to Icon Siam, the hop on, hop off. Yep. Thirty baht per person. Yep. So cheap, dirt cheap. Yeah, um, it's almost like it's a really poor country. Public transportation, maybe sixty baht, you know, for the Sky Train, whatever. Yep. We Did don't you? really like peoply places, and there's, we, I just like the comfort of the AC, the comfort of the oh my getting to A and B very quickly. So we, if you're, which is like, uh, which is like fine. There are a lot of people who don't like public transport. Like personally, I have literally no issue with public transport. Like in Japan, in particular, like you, everything's public transport in Japan. Like their, their trains run like to the millisecond. You know, everything is public transport in in Japan. It's just so ungodly convenient, especially when you're in like big cities. So like that doesn't bother me. She is not wrong. There are some people who just are like, you know what? Nah, I'm okay. I just want to get A B really quickly. But it's weird that she didn't mention her crippling social anxiety there. <laughs> looking at taking a bolt or a taxi you're going to be looking at um from where we were it depends how far you are right yeah you imagine 300 baht a day no, you didn't. on transportation no you didn't uh, you didn't you didn't you didn't spend away 300 baht per day on transportation because she barely left the apartment i'm sorry it is so weird like that she's trying to like narrow it down like this but it's like you can't take an estimate for like 30 days you didn't leave the fucking flat um and it cost us to get from bangkok to pataya uh about from there and back about four thousand baht it was how did you um, even like that's like how did you even do that like travel sorry guys i'm going crazy here today uh like she never actually really showed us the travel from like bangkok to pataya it's not something i didn't think about because i have the pro biggest problem is i have no idea where the fuck pataya is because surely you would sit there and you would think do you know what i'll show because she just suddenly was in pataya i thought pataya was like, maybe like a district or a suburb in bangkok because i don't know like, she's a travel vlogger. She should have shown... There there are people I watch who do, like, tra travel breakdowns where they will be like, I'm going to this area of this city today. And they will show the map on screen and show where it is in comparison to, like, the city center or something like that. Or if they're traveling across the country, they'll say, I'm going to start here and I'm going to end up here. They will do something like that. She's like, I, I, I'm in Pattaya now, guys. And it's like, what the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> she didn't show us traveling. That's something you could have filmed. About 2,000 baht per way. So we spent... Yeah, thanks. Good uh, math. About... 16,000 bots in transportation. But again, you could save on those costs, definitely. Like, now this was in budget for us, so that's fine. Sure. We made sure to budget extra because I know myself and, you know, it's a lot. Uh, I just, I just, I don't believe your figure because your figure was like, we spent like t $10 per day and then suddenly it's like, it took four, it was only like, I don't know, 4,000 bots. Cause you're like mixing and matching the currencies and stuff like that now. So I, it's, it's making it a bit harder to follow. But I, I, I don't believe you spent like 618 pounds on transportation alone. I, that just seems unreasonable to me, especially when I know you did not leave your hotel room for fucking ages. So that just seems silly. You didn't even say how she got to Pattaya. How did you get to Pattaya? Did you fly there? Is it far enough that you could fly there? Did you get a boat there? Did you get a train there? Did you get a bus there? Did you get a tuk-tuk there? How did you get to Pattaya? <laughs> <laughs> this, is a, this is a terrible video. Similar with these things, so we knew, like, okay, we're gonna, if we have to cut corners somewhere else, you know, we want to be comfortable with the transportation. Definitely not with food, though. I'm, def I'm not cutting corners there. I'll, I, will, I will not go to s certain attractions because they might actually cost me money, but I'm definitely not cutting down on transportation and food. It's almost like that's the reason why I'm a fucking 450 pound morbidly obese person. So. We don't want to stress ourselves out with planning all of the extra where I need to transfer on this bus. No. The bus, I think, is like 8 baht. That's just not even stressful. What, what was the bus? The bus is like 8 baht. What, where was the bus? You just said you didn't, you didn't take, take public transport. Where's the bus coming into it? What are you talking about? If you really want to save and you have no problem with tra public transportation, you can save a Do you know what? Most normal humans have no pro issue with public transportation. Most normal humans have that. It's almost like you don't like it because you're embarrassed despite this whole like, guys, I'm not about embarrassed by fat shaming or anything like that. I'm not embarrassed by my body. But this is the woman who can't even get on like a bus. <laughs> she can't even get on a bus. Like, Jesus Christ. It's, it's like so... I don't want to stress myself with transfers. Some people... Yes, yeah, certainly some people might not like that. But with like... Google Google Maps nowadays. Google Maps will tell you exactly what to do for a lot of places. A lot of money. Food. Food is a major expense, that's for yeah, sure. For you. We spent 26,000 baht total um, for that's the a low ball. food, give or take. 
Uh, give, give her, give her take, give her take about two grand. <laughs> I, okay, bro. She spent, she spent like six hundred pounds on food. All she did was eat. All she did was eat. I, so I, I, I just, I just assume it's that's a low ball figure. Uh, that's actually not including. Those are just meals. That's not including trips to the Seven Eleven. Okay, so that's where the two grand variation came in. We would spend about five to six hundred baht per day on food. Uh, the food was kind of pricey. Show that here. We ordering in or going to re restaurants. Yeah. Um, sometimes we Weird you didn't show us any of those like restaurants you went to. You showed us you went to like a pizza place. <laughs> that was it. It wasn't even like a nice pizza place. It was like a chain pizza restaurant. We went to we went to loads of restaurants. When it, when someone says that, I think of like elegance. I think of you going to like a very fancy restaurant for a sit down four course meal or something like that. When she says restaurants, I know she's talking about fucking KFC. We'd go to a fancier restaurant and it would cost... Uh, 1500 baht and spits are here pretend they went to fancy sorry guys like i said foam popular guy apparently um I, I just i don't buy that she was going to fancy restaurants that's, that's something she could have filmed us that's something she could have shown i i i just like yes is food likely her biggest um expenditure on this trip yeah 100 when it when it is is like right now just for like meals apparently as if she kept like fucking receipts let's let's not pretend this is the woman who like she can't even like do her taxes and she is out here claiming like exact amounts that she spent on, on like different meals and different places and all it's like bro i guarantee one you don't keep receipts and two you're paying in cash so how the fuck are you keeping track of this like this is just her estimate and right now her estimate is that she spent the same on transportation for like the entire trip as she did on food which is fucking insane by the way but that's even food not including just her daily eating allowance and like snacks and shit like that 100 baht a day um you could eat street food sometimes for 80 baht a meal for yeah. a plate of pad thai so um but salah's arab and he loves arab food so we would go to arab so? street a lot and like uh, salah's arab so he has to eat Arab food or something. I thought you would even go with halal or something like that. He's Arab and he likes Arab food. Well, aren't aren't, aren't you obsessed with Arab food? That's a claim that you have made. You're the one saying that you were craving Arab food and you just can't wait to go back to Kuwait because you get cheap Arab food. Like it's so weird they made they put this on like Salah suddenly. It's like bizarre. That's like her saying I'm Canadian. I, I, I went to Canadian Street over and over again because I just wanted Canadian food. It's like, if I go overseas, I'm like, like well, I'm Irish. I just, I just hunt potatoes the entire fucking time. It's like, the, it's the, you're in a different country. You don't have to eat the same food. <laughs> I go to the shisha lounges and eat a huge Arabic meal. Wow, Those kinds yeah. of things. Um, you know, we did enjoy the street food once in a while. We went to Jod Fair. Once in a while. She made it sound like she was out there, like, really exploring the culture. Like, oh, you know, once in a while I went there and I maybe got something. Bro, you're, like, why the fuck did you even go to Thailand? <laughs> why the fuck did you even go to Thailand? Yada yada. But overall, Look we at just this spend shit. a lot more on food than, I mean, you could find cheaper as well. It just depends on what you're, you're wanting to. Bro. You're 450 pounds. You don't know to need to go in this in depth as to why you spent a lot of money on food. Spend and uh, how good you are at, at finding deals and stuff like that. Attractions. So you have to budget for attractions. Oh, I can't wait for this, bitch. they cost money. And what? You have, to you have to budget for attractions because some of them cost money? What? She, why did she say that? Like that was like mind blowing to her? Because a lot of the shit they did did not cost money. And if it did, it cost money. Nothing. So I am genuinely curious. So Find the best price. It's a bit tricky. There are different companies that sell ticket prices at a discounted price. Wow. Um, Imagine so that. Try not to book directly from the actual site if you can. Uh, so for example, the uh, elephants cost two thousand baht each for the day, but we were able to find it at eight eighteen hundred each because we we bought off of a, a site. The tigers were twelve hundred baht for the two of us wow. on, a, on a special as well. Why did she take a picture? That wasn't even like a picture they got. That was like a picture off the picture. What the fuck? <laughs> Another only thing she has is like the tigers and the elephants because that's like the only thing she fucking paid for. I think the sanctuary of truth was eight hundred for the two of us. Eight hundred baht. Yep. The the Buddha, big Buddha was free. There's some attractions yep. that are free. There's, there's there's a lot of attractions that are free, and you went to them <laughs> like constantly. There's a ton of free things you can do. When yeah, you imagine. Park is free. Uh, many of the parks are free. There's a lot of things. Many the parks, streets, streets, streets are free. Um, you know, shitting in your hands and clapping—that's also free, bro. Yeah, we know you're explaining like 
basic, just like human civilization concepts to us. You're not explaining anything. It's why I took a piss at her so hard because she tried to make it sound like we've been out doing so much and we're flexing our fucking wealth. And it's like everything you do is free. It's like it's like you in fucking Kuwait. Basically, everything you do is free or super cheap. You're like flexing. It's like, oh, guys, I'm out here like living my best life in Kuwait. And you go to like a fucking museum, which costs like two dollars to enter <laughs> you can do for free some temples are free some some charge you just yeah. have to really do your research but oh no shit us, um we did a few expensive attractions no, okay tell which and, ones like the elephant conservation etc that wasn't expensive why was that what was that would we consider that expensive she said like she said that was two thousand baht each what does she say that's so that's about 50 pounds is that i don't am i a snob is that considered like an expensive attraction? Like, is that 50 pounds? Is that like budget? Bro, you could spend that at the fucking cinema. What? What? <laughs> have I have I just had my worldview changed here that she considers 50 pounds expensive? Like, I'm, I, 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 this isn't even played up. I'm actually like fucking like mentally blown away by this. Like, like that was like, the, like I went on like, food tours in japan that were that expensive and those were like you know just food tours <laughs> this is just like food tours we went to a couple different restaurants and stuff like that we did that like four times <laughs> I, I, it, it's, it's 50 pounds for like that, that it considered like groundbreakingly expensive for her that is and also please note this is her setting the high bar it's 50 pounds and this is the woman trying to flex her wealth it's like 50 pounds is the high bar for her on things that she did. God, I can't even remember what it was for us to fucking go to, because we did like a day trip up Mount Fuji and across to Hakone and everything like that. I'm trying to remember how much that cost. I think our probably cost about 200 pounds each or something like that. Something like that, but it was like, that was like a crazy, awesome, amazing trip that I'll never forget. And we have Herb here, we're going like, I spent like 50 pounds, Whew, broke the bank with that one. Uh, but there are some that were free, and uh, we spent about 20,000 baht total for attractions. So the elephants was genuinely like near like of a quarter of what of what you just spent there? <laughs> was it like a quarter? She said it was like 2,000 each to 4,000, so it was like, it was a fifth. The elephant attra was attraction was a fifth of her total expenditure. For, for <laughs> I want her to break it down, I'm sorry. All we've got is that the elephants cost like 50 quid. <laughs> all we got is the elephants cost like 50 quid and that was like near enough a, a, a like a fifth of like her entire expenditure i i want to know what the others cost because i really didn't think elephants are going to turn out to be the most expensive one out of the list oh no souvenirs and gifts we actually they probably nearly spent as much going to see fucking saw 10 <laughs> had to purchase some luggage which was kind of pricey we had oh to buy Christ. two suitcases to fit everything we bought yeah well that was your per planning that was not to do with the holiday so i uh, do not include that she she cannot include these figures because she purposely did that that is her being fucking stupid like when i when i traveled across to japan obviously i have, I have one bag full of stuff but I, I carried my big bag with my small bag inside it <laughs> because like I th on that flight we only paid for one bag because i only need it but i knew on the way back i would need two bags because i was going to buy stuff so i just brought a big my big bag with my smaller bag on the inside and then when i got to japan i took the small bag out so i had the big bag to put my like souvenirs and stuff i bought because i knew i was going to buy a lot because i'm a fucking weeb like that's how you have to plan for a holiday like getting out there and buying extra luggage yes that will always be expensive because they know they have you over a barrel they know you're a tourist and if you're buying luggage it's because you fucking need luggage um, you know, after we came back, we gathered with family and friends, and we gave out the gift Sure, you did. Yeah, Christmas sure. Okay, things, yeah, know. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, um, you know, think, you know, I met all my family and my friends. You know, I, I give them, like, you know, you know, stuff and uh, things and, you know, because these are real people and these are real gifts I give them. So I know them off the top of my head. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, pretty Calm down. About 15,000 baht on souvenirs. Sure you did. And sure then, you did. I, I believe you uh, entirely. Yeah. So, and, and By souvenirs, she just meant fucking like cookies for herself in the airport. The, the suitcases, okay, bro. I can't remember how much exactly they were. We don't care. The log. They don't mind. He purchased they, them. They don't I matter. I remember. I forgot to ask Sure you did. But the souvenirs. We don't, um, bro, we don't care. We don't care how much the suitcase costs because it doesn't matter for the story. Were 15,000 baht, roughly. Um, so then we have SIM cards. You're going to have to get SIM cards. You can get them in yep. the airport when you arrive. There's so many booths of SIM This is like the only like semi-decent tip I feel like she's even giving. But I think, like, doesn't everyone know this one by now? 
that it's a good idea to get like a 30 day sim card for the country you're traveling to like isn't this just a common knowledge at this point like maybe it wouldn't have been like five six years ago but i think at this point this is common knowledge cards uh everywhere very competitive so be sure to shop around i know it's probably not the first thing you want to do when you're tired and you know get arriving but you have to do it they have really good all-inclusive like unlimited data plans high-speed data plans 5g um and those were four thousand for the two of us four thousand bought for the two of us for the entire time we were there so all in all we spent approximately 115,000 bought bot for the entire trip uh, so that's a thousand KD. That's very expensive for 42 days. That is incredibly expensive. Like in my opinion, there are like, I saw someone in the comment section being like, Oh my God, Chantel, I spent that amount for 10 days in Disneyland. It's like, yes, cause you're going to Disneyland. <laughs> yeah. Cause you're going to Disneyland. That's why you spent that much. Cause Disneyland is like the, the luxury of luxury places to go for like a family, you know, cause you're spending that on an entire family to go very often. It's well known that Disneyland is incredibly overpriced. Everyone knows that. It is that is like a purely personal preference thing. If you want to spend that ridiculous amount of money, spend that ridiculous amount of money in Disneyland. That's what, what people know. She is traveling to a generally poor country, and like that is ridiculous. Holy shit, that is actually ridiculous for forty two days. Like I'm trying to th I'm trying to think because I was in Japan for like I think twenty two days or something like that. Or something like that, I think it was. Uh, I'm just like, yeah, mine, mine would, mine would be well under half of that. Um, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of ridiculous because like also Japan is a lot more uh, affluent, to put it bluntly, than like, um, Kuwait would be, it's not Kuwait, it would be, than, uh, uh, Thailand would be. I, I think it's pretty expensive, especially when you know that so much of that is spent on food, spent specifically on food. <laughs> and like, the attractions were so little, like the vast majority of my expenditure in Japan probably would have been on like... I don't know, just the flights and the attractions. Those would be the two big ones. The hotel really wasn't that bad. The food really wasn't that bad at all. Um, it's, in, it's insane. She went there for 42 days. And, like, she spent 400 pounds on attractions. <laughs> she spent 400 pounds on fucking attractions. But Salah thinks it's a bit more. So, but that's... A Total actually ended up being 4,800. Total actually ended up being... 4,800. How? Where did that variation come from? How did you get a 2,200 pound? You, your estimate was 50% of what it cost. How? How did you, how do you even mess up that bad? Like, actually, how do you even mess up that bad where you're off by 50%? 4,800 for 42 days? That's bad. That's that's the estimate of like a hundred pounds per day. Uh, that's bad. That is that's for like a like a country like Thailand that is not an expensive country. That is actually pretty fucking bad. How the fuck? How do you, how would you even manage that? Like, cause like the flights and all. Like, in my opinion, she overestimated the cost of the flights for whatever fucking reason. Maybe she's including the cost of flights, including the third seat that they bought for her. You know, maybe they are actually showing that. Because when I looked at it for just two people, it was nowhere near what she was claiming it was for d for the two of them. So maybe she is including the third seat. Um, but that's ridiculous. <laughs> that is actually ridiculous. 4,800 pounds for 42 days. That, that You should not be spending uh, over 100 pounds per day for a hotel. Back, especially, remember, remember guys, when I, when I talked about how much her hotel cost, it estimated to be about 15 pounds a night. So, like, if it's 15 pounds a night, there's no way it should be over 100 pounds per day for you to be staying there. There's just no way. Thailand is an expensive country. Basically what we spent. Jesus Christ, uh, that's for mental. These, these categories. So, it just depends. Like I said, you know, if you're, what you spend on transportation, you can spend less. And it's entirely possible to spend a lot more. You could eat at more gourmet restaurants. You could be doing a lot more things. I I, do, I love it. Her idea of like you could spend more immediately is just like you know you could eat lots more, <laughs> bro. That's I think that's what your problem was. Theme parks. It's yeah, you could actually do something in that country. Imagine to spend, especially hotels. They have really, really, really fancy ones. They have really, really cheap ones. They have hostel. Ho uh, they have hostels. They have. They have hospitals. You know where foodie probably had to stay. <laughs> you know it just depends. So. That's but insane. just giving you an idea of how our experience was. But one thing's for sure... Terrible. Imagine spending £4,800 to travel to Thailand, where for like 30 of the day, she just sat in your fucking hotel room eating takeout.
imagine that. Imagine... Like, and I, I don't even know if I believe these numbers. Like, like I said, her claim is ridiculous. I'm not sure if, like, Salah said, no, 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 make it seem like more. Make it seem like we're richer. Make it seem like we we can easily spend that amount of money. You know, go on, pump those numbers up. Maybe they did something like that. Because I, I don't I don't know how you could. Like, especially with them not doing much. The food being cheap. Barely leaving the fucking apartment for 30 days. I don't even know. I can't even picture in my head how you could spend £4,800. You definitely have to try 7-Eleven at least once when you're there. You have Imagine that is her takeaway from that entire trip. You have to try 7-Eleven. to try the Thai tea and wow. the cheese toasties from the 7-Eleven. Oh my god, imagine like you went to Thailand and you did literally nothing the entire time there. And your only takeaway is, you need to get a cheese toasty from 7-Eleven, guys. Fuck <laughs> me. If anything else, you have to do it. I'll throw myself All over right, a bridge. Alright guys, so that's about it. I hope that helped you. I don't know if you guys are planning a trip to Thailand. Let me. Oh my god, well you undersold. You made Thailand seem like shit, so maybe not. Let me know in the comments if any of you are. And if you have any questions, I hope I can answer oh, them for you. Oh, she's a fucking idiot. All in all, we had an amazing time away Did from the Kuwait heat. That was... She, she, said, she said the fucking heat in Thailand was worse. Um, because it was human heat, she said it was worse. Especially why we wanted to go, because I was thinking, you know... Because, uh, uh, you see her eyes darting around like a fucking maniac the second she starts trying to come up with this lie. It was a visa run. We know that. Everyone knows that at this point. It's so weird. It's like, oh, I chose to go because it was, ah, warm. So I decided to, instead of sitting in my apartment in the AC, I decided to go to Thailand to sit in the hotel in the AC instead. Because that, that makes sense, doesn't it, guys? Do I want to go all the way to Canada? It's still summer there, but, you know, Thailand was still hot, um, you know, but it was more humid, but it was less. It was, like, in the 30s, and Kuwait at the time was in the 50s, so it was... What? She literally complained that Thailand was so humid. What is she talking about? I could escape from the heat. So, I, you know, I said, am I going to go to Canada alone? She literally said she wasn't leaving the apartment, the, the, the uh, hotel in, in Thailand because it was so hot and humid. I don't, what is she talking about? You know, I don't really want to go right now alone. I want to go on a trip with my husband, and we said, okay, let's go. It was kind of like, kind of impromptu. Like, let, let, let's just go. Let's this go. is. <laughs> so. It, oh, it was, like, it, it was, it was impromptu. Like, oh, my God. She's just like a terrible liar. Oh, this is awful. God. Imagine just like dropping yourself in. It's so hard because you can't think of any lies. You can't think even make your trip sound exciting. It, you're trying to flex on people, but you can't. You're sitting there spending 15 pounds a night in a hotel and somehow you end up with spending 4,800 pounds. Like, I'm sorry. I, I guarantee the first one she said was actually close to what they spent. And Salah said, no, no, no. Make, make it sound like we're richer. Make it sound like we're more impressive. Pop, pump those numbers up. Pop those numbers up a bit there. Because I don't know how you got from spending 15 pounds a night in a hotel um and like the food being really cheap and barely doing any attractions to suddenly spending four thousand eight hundred pounds I, I i don't understand that like whatsoever like because you said we spent like ten dollars a day on on um like transportation and i didn't believe that because of course i wouldn't believe that because it's fucking nonsense because they barely left the apartment this is this was silly jesus christ Oh my god uh yeah don't listen to her for to travel advice i don't think I, I even needed to say that but obviously she doesn't she doesn't understand travel she doesn't understand travel whatsoever and you can even see that in her made up numbers uh insane uh that's gonna be it though guys have a good one take care of yourselves bye bye